presentation of the opportunities that you have got, and this week is no different. You better believe it. You have hope, and that's why we are here. Your chance to multiply the possibilities that you have coming your way every single week. Don't let your limits test you. You, on the other hand, should be testing your limits. Absolutely. Have a go at the things that seem really difficult, for instance. Oh, something yeah. that feels really hard. Maybe mm. you should try that this and week. And I'll tell you my story about this weekend. But hey, remember, well, rage is not the absence, or rather courage is not the absence <laughs> of fear. Mm. It is the conquest of fear. So push yourself a bit more this week, and you'll be amazed at the heights that you can absolutely achieve. Good morning and welcome. It's another brand new edition of Wake Up Nigeria. Clearly, we want to set you on the right path, in the right direction. My name is Titi Lyo Oyinson. And of course, my name is Mazino Appeal. There's so much we've planned for you guys today and of course, the week ahead. So don't mm. forget to stream the show live at tvc.tv and yes, on sir. Facebook at tvcentertainment.tv as well. Send in those comments. Tell us how we missed Mazino last week. Ah, oh, stop. Yes. As Did in you really? Three days without Mazino. Like, no. how are we going to survive? Stop. Uh, well, so, hey, we would love to see what you have to say. Just make sure you use our hashtag, Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Yes, you can also download our mobile app from any Android or iOS store that you can find. Watch us live on your mobile devices from anywhere that you might be going, maybe, or even around the world. We have a recommendation for you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's TVC Entertainment. And of course, there are loads of YouTube videos that we've put out there just for you to go and catch up. Absolutely. I should tell you about the weekend. I should start yeah. now because it was a fantastic weekend. Yeah. I actually cheated on my wife. Ah, with, ah. with Nigeria. What I mean is I have so much love for this country and I want to share with everybody else. It is so beautiful out there, but we never get to do that because we're all trapped in Lagos. But out there, it is such a fantastic Is your wife watching country. right now? I'm sure she is, but I, she I understands. I don't remember where I, where I saved her number as. I think I need we to buzz her. <laughs> but hey, you We're going to be starting with something a little more mm -hmm. inspirational. Ah, though. yes, please. Mm -hmm. Do tell. All righty then. Woo! Oh, yes, indeed. Hey, look who's here. Mike, how you doing, man? Hey. Hey. Mikey. No, I'm excited to see you. Go, 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 go. Did you just see me before now? <laughs> hey. Tell us about the weekend. I've been waiting just... I want to, oh. I want to listen to Juice now. So First please, up. let's allow Mazino tell us about Mary, the weekend. Mary, let me let you know about this. Mm. I believe, and I'm going to admit this. Yes, Nigeria, I am getting old. <laughs> now, I started the weekend off on Thursday, okay. trying to get to Abuja on my bike. Mm. 720 kilometers. And of the 720 kilometers, I was only able to accomplish... 320 so i had okay. 400 to go wow. and i was unable to make it because i had to wow. i had to cut the, sh the trip short because okay. i did not have the physical strength i used to have mm -hmm. from before so However, didn't get to abuja. i didn't get to abuja ah. i stopped at adui kitty ah. Ah. adui kitty by the way was I a very that just here. uh no, 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 no. <laughs> that you, that you, don't pay, you just enter back and take back to adui kitty wow. you enter oh, Okada, wow. Okada, Listen, only adui kitty first off, it was, it was not an easy journey. Um, however, I enjoyed the sights, the sounds, the smell of it all. Every single thing about Nigeria is such a beautiful place, but we do not get to experience it because we're all stuck here, like I said from before. Yeah, yeah. And I really wish I could carry everybody along, but I can't. Were you alone? Did you do it alone um, or you were Initially, I wasn't, but when I broke off, I had to be alone because I had to come back all by myself. Okay. But um, <laughs> I, I took a day, I spent a day in Adoikiti all by myself. Okay. Um, I had a bath in a stream oh, um, wow. in my birthday suit. Wow. Um, I climbed up a hill for no reason just because I wanted to see it. I visited the Kogo Sea. Um, it was beautiful and it, it brought to note the essence of relaxation and how we don't get enough of it and how it helps us mentally. I'm vibrant now, even if I was unable to, to finish the yeah. journeys physically, but I think it was such a beautiful experience. Not a lot of people understand the physical exertion that goes into biking. Uh, you know, um, a so a lot of people just feel you're on the bike and you're not doing no. much. Uh, and I've talked to bikers before. Mm. I've even mentioned, you've mentioned it before that it yeah. takes a lot of energy. Yes, it does. Mm. It does. And you have to be prepared for it as well, mentally mm. as well. It's, mm. it's, mm. nah. I want to take Mary on my next trip. Mary, ah. you come <laughs> so come and do what? No, uh, not to know. Uh, 
Come off it, like Mike could say. <laughs> Actually, you've nailed it. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I mean, the idea of adventure, the idea of moving out, of, of taking a road trip and having, I, yeah. I think we should, some people are open, just let me know. We don't do a road trip. Yeah, I think it would be fun. So be there's, this, there, there, there's this guy that always puts up road trip plans uh -huh. on WhatsApp status. Mm -hmm. So he has a group of friends. Um, yeah. Shout out to you, Shegun Shegabi. Yeah. No, and I know him, yeah. you, you probably know him. I, I won't be surprised mm -hmm. for someone that goes, that goes out of the States often. Now, what they do is they organize road yeah. trips. Mm -hmm. they, they might go out of Lagos, choose a place outside um, Lagos, and just stay for like days. The trip from the moment you leave Lagos till you get there till you arrive, everything is carefully All planned. Yeah. Yeah. And they so enjoy it. Like, if you, if you watch his status while tr whenever he travels, it's always such a delight mm -hmm. to see. I'm not kidding. Okay, and I think so it's something we should do more. I'll do a push for something, yeah. So, see. But boss man, if you are listening to this, <laughs> I knew I was going to do Every month, this. you know, we can do reports, wake up oh. from uh, different from the Kogo So, you yeah. know, one week in a month, nice. one week in a month. Wake up, you know, you are one, one presenter will just go, I yeah. just have a I'll whole week. From I just report from there. Yeah. Give you live report. Mike. So, are you seeing that idea? If you've uh, never spoken sense uh, before, this is the first time. You, you're heading oh, there, wow. Mike. <laughs> So the only, oh, the only just issue it. I have really is the Nigerian roads. That's ah, okay. just it. So I had to, I had to go there because mm -hmm. one of the reasons why people don't venture out of their comfort zone, even though their comfort zone in Lagos is mm -hmm. not actually as comfortable yeah, as one would think, about the risks or what the roads look like. The roads. The now potholes. let me come in defense of Nigeria. It's not mm -hmm. as bad as we make it seem. Actually, okay. there are bad spots, but mm -hmm. these are all state roads. Okay. The federal roads aren't too bad, from what I what I experienced um, over the weekend. Okay. Um, um, I think um, it, it, the attention has to be all, the call out has to go to the state governments to actually mm. make their inroads and all, but most of mm. the federal roads are actually quite good. All right. Yeah. That's someone that has actually been on the road yeah. recently saying well, that the roads are better. You, you I wouldn't know. <laughs> My last road trip was probably, what, four, four years no, ago? No, you should get out more. No, three years ago. You should get out more. Uh, and that was to Accra. Uh, no, my my yeah, last road trip yeah. was yeah. in, wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. Tell uh, you what, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. remember. Let's I can't even go remember. Go to Barakuda. Oh, yes, I remember. Where, where? NYSC. Hey, wow. Jesus. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Ten years cut ago. It, cut it, cut it. Let's do the news. That's just <laughs> too poor. <laughs> Mary, I'm sure you have the news for us. All right, then. Uh, we begin with the directive of the Inspector General of Police, uh, Mohamed Adamu, banning personnel of the Federal Special Anti Robbery Squad and other tactical squads from carrying out routine patrols and other conventional low risk duties. This includes stop and search duties, checkpoints, mounting of roadblocks, and traffic checks. In a statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, Frank Mba, the special squads are to now concentrate and respond only to cases of armed robbery, kidnapping, and other violent crimes. This directive comes after findings that a few personnel of the tactical squads perpetrate all forms of illegality contrary to the standard operating procedure. Meanwhile, two operatives of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad and their civilian accomplices have been arrested by the Lagos State Police Command. Uh, this is for acts of professional misconduct, including extortion and intimidation of innocent citizens. The operational vehicle of the men has since been impounded, while disciplinary procedure has begun. Here's a summary of the IGP's directive on the FSARs and other tactical squads. As we told you, the FSARs and other tactical squads have been banned from operating at the federal, zonal and command levels from routine patrol across the country. They are also banned from engaging in stop and search, mounting of roadblocks and traffic checks with immediate effect. The personnel are also banned from embarking on patrols on tactical assignments, in Mufti, so they must always appear in their police uniforms or approved tactical gear. Uh, the IGP also stopped the tactical squads from invading the privacy of citizens, particularly through indiscriminate and unauthorized search of mobile phones, laptops and other smart devices. The personnel are also to concentrate and respond only to cases of armed robbery, kidnapping and other violent crimes when the need arises. The IGP, the X Squad, and the monitoring unit to monitor and arrest erring FSAS personnel and other police officers on the road. Commissioners of police in charge of FSAS, state commands, and the supervisory zonal assistant inspectors, general of police, are to be held liable for any misconduct within their area of responsibility. 
Meanwhile, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is happy with the IGP's directive banning the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad and other tactical squads from carrying out routine patrols. Speaking to State House correspondents at his residence in Abuja yesterday, the Vice President strongly condemned the violations and abuses perpetrated by this notorious group of policemen, which he called bad eggs of the force. He also called for the prosecution of officers found guilty of these atrocities. And in Delta State, the police has dismissed as a hoax a viral video showing an alleged killing of a young man in Delta State by the special anti-robbery squad. Reacting to the trending online videos, the public relations officer of the Delta State Police Command told journalists that the young man is now receiving treatment in a hospital in Ugeli, but he was not shot by the police. And the said online videos about SAS operatives killing a young man in Ugeli is not only false, malicious, and erroneous, but also misleading. Operatives of Safe Delta Squad in Ugeli, while on patrol along Wari Ugeli by Wetland Hotel Ugeli, observed a white colored Lezos Jeep without registration number that suddenly parked by the roadside, which on sighting police patrol team, the driver immediately zoomed off at high speed in a suspicious manner. It could be recalled that it is under a similar circumstance that some suspected kidnappers recently kidnapped a woman who was with her two children in a car in same Ugeli, escaped from police patrol team along Ugeli Patani Expressway in the operational Mercedes-Benz car before they were later arrested in Patani. Consequently, the team gave them a hot chase and they successfully intercepted the vehicle and arrested the two occupants. On their way to the station with the arrested suspect inside the police patrol vehicle, one of the suspects jumped out of the moving vehicle and sustained body and head injuries. While trying to rescue him, angry mob came out to attack the policeman, which made the team to leave the scene with the other suspect in their patrol vehicle to their office to avoid violent confrontation with the mob. Now, less than one week to the Ondo governorship election, there are reports of another clash between supporters of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party in the state. Trouble started at Obanla Junction when one of the party's supporters was allegedly beaten, leading to reprisal attacks. The incident led to residents and passers-by running for safety. Many were injured in the clash. And that's it on the news updates for this hour. We will take a break and return with the sports news. Stay with us. Man, I saw that excitement in you as we were telling that story, by the way. But let's get excited about the stories and the headlines for the National Dailies this morning, shall we? So if you're with me, we'll start from the Nation newspaper this morning. Today is Monday, October 5th, 2020. And the first big headline on the Nation, Buhari won't succumb to threats on restructuring. Presidency once against unpatriotic outbursts by advocates. And at the bottom of the nation, we have this headline, Outrage over FSAR's excesses. Osibanja, Samolu, Omoagege, Kiyamo, Chaid outfit, IG band squad, others from routine patrol, stop and search. And I'm sure you know about this because it was all the rage on social media all weekend after some clips emerged showing some uh, overzealous activities by the units. And oil firms to fund development of host communities in PIB plan. At the top of the nation, Lagos issues flood alert over dam inflow. Kwara Kogi groan. And conflicting signals on Trump's state of health on the international scene there. Find that on page 33. And NSC set to become public company. Business page on page 17 to 28 tell. And Fidelity Bank appoints Obie Opara as directors. Let's move on now to the Daily Sun newspaper. IGP cuts SARS wings. Band squad tactical teams from stop and search patrol. Osibanjo Nigerians hail action. Security experts react. And Adeboye laments Nigeria's rising debt profile, decayed infrastructure, and a look at the photo story there. Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Pantami, uh, Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat, and Founder CEO of Zynox Technologies Limited, uh, Mr. Stanley A.K., and others during the inauguration of Zynox Technology Experience Center in Lagos. And to the side of that picture, restructure Nigeria now, Governor Fayemi says. 
True federalism uh, will silence ethnic agitations, says Kokori. And at the bottom of the Daily Sun, under gubernatorial tension in Akure as thugs take over streets, shoot sporadically. In short credible polls, PDP tasks Buhari. President lampoons those against Labour's suspension of strike, bans them um, disgruntled and enemies of Nigeria. At the top of the Daily Sun, once again, that warning, uh, food scarcity looms in southeast over herdsmen's attacks, says Asetu. We move now to the Daily Independence. Controversy trails scarcity of international passport booklets. PCOs accused of charging each applicant extra 5,000 naira. And we have enough booklets nationwide, says immigration. At the bottom of the Daily Independence, banks' loan growth rises by 3.5 trillion naira on CBN intervention. And at the very bottom, New Peng. Pengasin asked members in Chevron to shut down operations. The photo story here, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, uh, Chairman, Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, addressing the commission staff at Ifedore local government area of Undo State on Sunday ahead of 2020 governorship elections holding on Saturday. And to the side of that photo story, those capitalizing on labor strike to cause anarchy disappointed, says the presidency. On page 29, appointments sent to government office should be by merit. And finally, Fidelity Bank appoints Obe Opara as directors. Oh, and at the top of the Daily Independence, IGP bans SRs, others, and tactical squads from patrols. NSCDC officer kills DSS operative in Oshu. Sad story there. Find that on page 29. On page 4, my position as NGF chair, not to advance 2023 ambitions, says Fiamy, reveals why he didn't show up at Edo APC rally. And... Finally, now, Adeboye, sponsor of Terrorism, won't see New Year. The Daily Trust now. Uh, discos reject 1.5 billion naira worth electricity. We have capacity to deliver more power, says the Jenkos. We're committed to improving service, discos say, and consumer products, or rather consumer groups, want to stop um, to tariff hike. Want to stop to uh, tariff hike. At the top of the Daily Trust, uh, IPPIS, Nasu, uh, Sanu begin nationwide strike today. And inside story of Kanu woman who murdered her two children. Uh, that story also made rounds inside of social media over the weekend. Very gory story, actually. And APC has not abandoned in, uh, restructuring, says Fire Me. At the bottom of uh, the Daily Trust, IGP bans FSARs once again from roads, stop and search duties. And National Hajj Savings Scheme takes off in Kano. As 27,000 passengers arrive in Nigeria despite strict procedure, and Buhari warns agitators. And indeed, that will be the dailies for this morning. Join us again inside the second hour where we get to do it and some more papers. Do stay tuned. We take a break now. We've got more Make Up Ni Wake Up Nigeria on the other side. Do stay tuned. Hello and good morning. You're probably just waking up or probably about to get out onto the road. You need to be extremely careful with how you manage your movement. That's why we're here to ensure that you get your, to your intended destinations safe and sound. So what's happening on the roads? Let's take a gander, shall we? Okay, if you are coming from uh, the Bega area of Lagos, maybe you're coming from outside Lagos, just getting into Lagos uh, right now, you will have quite a journey heading to the island. It's not a really tough one as of right now, but it does seem to be building up. <clears throat> so um, from what I can see, the Bega Junction isn't too hectic, but uh, it does have some tension uh, around all the U-turns. There are quite a lot of turns in that area, and you have to understand how to maneuver. But once you get onto the expressway, uh, you will have plane sailing all the way past Alausa, all the way past Tollgate, and uh, surprisingly, all the way past Ojota. If you keep going down the express heading towards Third Mainland Bridge, you shouldn't have any uh, challenges. Even at Ogudu, you shouldn't have any challenges passing Bagada. You shouldn't have any challenges until you get onto the bridge itself, which is quite free until you get to Ibutemeta Junction. Now, there has been a lot of construction happening uh, around there. Oh, well, well, diversions happening, not construction, diversions happening around there. And it does take a little bit of time for cars to maneuver from one side of the bridge to the other. So just take it slow, 
just be a little bit patient and you'll get past it. Uh, but um, after the maneuvering, you're going to have to slow down uh, for about 20 minutes on the road. If you're going to Bonnie Camp area of VI, uh, you should have a 35 minute journey if you're coming from Bega, which is not so bad compared to some uh, other traffic jams people have experienced on the Third Mainland Bridge before now. Um, you might have some challenges around the um, <coughs> CMS area because there is a detour that you could take for that 35 minute journey. If you decide to take that route, you'll have a 35 minute journey. But if you decide to go straight into Osborne uh, to go through Falamore to get to VI, uh, it's gonna be a lot slower. You're probably thinking about uh, being on the road for about 50 minutes. So uh, I have a feeling there are probably some updates on Twitter with Mazino, Mike and Mary, the three M's. <laughs> Yes, indeed, we do have some references from Twitter about the state of the traffic out there, especially for people who are coming from the Agege area this morning, trying to get to the island from Dokwemu and Idimangwere area. There seems to be a very long stretch of traffic that you might have to consider going into as you head toward this side of town. Also, look at a couple other bridges, um, talking especially about the Eko Bridge. There's something happening over the Kastain roundabout today. Don't exactly know what it might be. You might want to let us know using the hashtag I wake up Nigeria on TVC as well. As you tell us about the traffic, maybe we'll get to tell people what's going on there. But there is traffic on both sides heading away from the island and heading over to the island on the Eco Bridge. Those are the references coming from off of social media. Do you guys have any um, others? Yes, um, I have one here from Follow Lasma. A report of a broken down loaded trailer on Majidu Bridge in Ward Mile 12 having rare hub problem. The owner is working on it to get it off the road. That's very kind of Lasma. Oh. Wow, yeah. okay. Oh, but that's uh, their job now, isn't it? They're supposed to. What job? Is their job. Wait, their let job me finish. Uh, traffic <laughs> Chief NG says, the full stretch of mile 12 via uh, the BRT bus station before Jota is a one way coming from Ikorodu. Mm. The full stretch has been blocked. Oh dear. Hmm. Mm. And then uh, here's another one still on uh, traffic reports. This one is from Tokwen Rewaju. Uh, the previous one was from Remzo 85. This says Lagos Ibano Expressway is already locked down from Moe End. Oh dear. Complete standstill at oh. the moment. Wow. Normalcy is returning, and I guess along with it comes the traffic situations. Everybody's trying to get in or out of yes. town and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah. But that's what we have, Titi. Okay, thank you guys. As quickly as possible, let me see what it's like around Aja area. Um, now, it does seem like it's quite free if you're coming from that area right now. You have a 45 minute journey ahead of you. Just make sure you stay on the main carriage and don't take any back streets and you should be fine. I'll be heading into the kitchen at this point. Guys, what are we talking about? Well, alrighty. Mm. Well, while you're making your way back here, let me already oh, start. We're looking as if the person's coming from <laughs> from Moe to uh, VI. Oh, but but people actually do do that. The people actually uh, live in Moe and then work on. No, no, I'll confirm now. Confirm yeah. now. Confirm. Listen, very confirm. excited about football. But before we talk about football, Mike, yeah, yeah. Let me talk <laughs> about the fact that um, a lot of excitement over uh, social media about the IGPs. Um, uh, um, uh, the situation with FSARS. Yes, we'll focus on that. Let's leave for that. <laughs> no, we so are going to talk about football. Don't worry. Football. But you, we have to do football, Mike. We will. Don't worry. Let's focus on that. Nothing more important <laughs> than 7 2. This is Monday morning. Monday morning. In any case, you know, Mary, in any case, Mike. Titi was very concerned about the fact that this morning we spoke about it that there might be an increase in crime. Yeah, crime. And I was saying that no. The fact is that they've been banned from having or engaging in low risk activities or patrols and all of that mm -hmm. and if you've been across the country you'd mm. actually be able to differentiate what exactly their roles are mm. on the roads if they're supposed to be on the roads mm. as against what it is that we are experiencing here with little pockets of um, overzealous activities mm -hmm. so i'm saying that it's a good idea it's a good thing if they focus on their um, activities we should have a situation where we won't have all of these stories that we keep hearing all the yeah. time so normally but, you know we have patrol mm. officers mm -hmm. not fsars mm. yeah we we actually have police patrol vehicles. Yes, exactly. We have different units of the police force. Mm. So what we've had in recent times is more of FSAs on the road 
doing what maybe other people ought to have done. So for them to be withdrawn, I, I, I really do hope and I believe that there won't be an increase in the rate of crime. It will just be a case of the people supposed to do those duties mm -hmm. are doing them, I think, I believe. Um, so I, I was a little, you mentioned uh, something that you saw on the mm. way oh, back. Oh, he mentioned he I saw something. I didn't tell you guys, and ye kitty. On my way back, mm. actually. In your kitty, on my way ah. back. They actually, this was actually on the, in the news. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually in the news on Saturday. Yes. And funny thing is, I witnessed it. There was a robbery. You witnessed wow. it? Yes. <gasps> Gunshots and everything. Imagine how, I don't know whether to say I was excited or frightened, mm. half mm. my wits out. Mm. But there was a robbery. Um, apparently, it was a robbery at a bank, but it affected the entire community. Yeah. Oh. Um, shot sporadically in the air and all of that. And guess what? <laughs> the police station was down the road. These guys operated for 40 minutes. And those people guys... were in the bushes wow. waiting for them to finish up. And then they left and then the journey continued. Where were you? Ah, I was well on my way already, but <laughs> no. I could hear the gunshots so you, and wow. everything. Yes, we got, I was thinking of, you know, when you used to watch all this American film, when somebody, yes, when people bikes. When somebody driving back, <laughs> how can it all sniper rifle on their back? It's so only an Indian movie. I thought you'd just be like, oh, this, you just go, you just look for a new top. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> don't send your rifle. Him. I just picked them up from me. But, I was but, gone. But, I was out of there. I was out of there. And well done to, you know, getting out of there on time. Well, but but my that. issue is with what you said is that the police station was like... 500 meters away. That Imagine that's not news. That's not an issue. Did not. But that's not news. Issue. 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 But that, I would say something. Mm -hmm. say but that something. is what the uh, e, um, the, the, the SRs, SRs are supposed, supposed to be yeah. for. I would say something that um, I'm not. It's not like I'm trying to play devil's advocate, but we need to enforce. Uh, we need. We need to really equip mm. uh, men of the police of the themselves. Force, the police, the air forces, and all. We need to equip them because look. When you look at the firepower, some of all these robbers and all these people come with, mm -hmm. you understand, you think about it, can they withstand it? I mean, you look at guns and you see cello tape on the cartridges. <laughs> so I'm thinking that, you know, sometimes I see those guns with cello tape on the cartridges, I'm thinking, maybe this thing shoots, when the thing just go, when the thing just jump up. Listen. Of course, you understand, but then you see somebody who's coming up with automatic yeah, rifles and well-planned dynamite and all of that. Yeah, dynamite will use, so, actually. And so, and so you think about it. For the bank thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, if you're going to rob a bank, you definitely yes, you have to have, you have, to have a How would you know well, this Not bank? like I'm teaching people, <laughs> but if you've read bank robbery reports. No, it's true, I don't know no, what this one, I don't know what do. When you read bank robbery reports. So my point, I would say, I would say that as much as yes. we, the, the problems of the police have been, you know, spoken about in, in a lot of forms. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I would say that we need to equip them. Yeah. I mean, look at their barracks. Mm. I was talking mm. to somebody, I went mm. to Dodan. At one point, Dodan Barracks was the seat of power, right? Mm. I yeah. went to Dodan Barracks, I saw that place. There's a renovation going on there. And I was, mm. like, I was like, this used to be the seat of power. Yeah. I saw the gate, mm. the green, white, green gate that had the coat of arms, mm. which was the official gate. And you need to see how disorderly that Plastic. place is. Mm. And I was like, this was the seat of power. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was it was shocking. Yeah. I'm sorry we couldn't talk about football. No, 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 but, uh, no, 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 listen, no, 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 no. I, I think we, we, we must we'll talk, talk about, about it. it. Oh, we we are gonna talk fine. about all of that inside yeah. the show. We have so much coming for you, so you guys don't worry, there's still two hours to go. Uh, Mike gets excited when we talk about sports and I want him to get that excitement out and share with you guys. Police force. Yeah, please, we need some people in there who can help make things happen. Mm -hmm. Do stay tuned, we've got more coming your way. Let's take a break now. It's still wake up Nigeria. We'll be right back. Wow. Now this, for today's Daily Vulnerable, this is something that resonates with me. Um, live your life for yourself, man. You know, and uh, you'd never be enough for people of the world. For world people, there'll always be something. For those of you who want to settle down. Okay, moving on from that, of course, uh, something I want to do now is ensure that you have some updates when it comes to the tech world. I'll begin with this uh, piece of news where Facebook last week says it has filed a lawsuit in the U.S. against two companies that had engaged in an international data scrapping operation. Now, the operation extended across Facebook in properties, including both Facebook and Instagram, as well as other large websites and services, including Twitter, Amazon, LinkedIn, and YouTube. The companies which gathered the data of Facebook users for marketing intelligence purposes did so in violation of Facebook's terms of service, says Facebook. Now, the businesses named in the lawsuit are Israeli-based Brand Total Limited and Unimania Incorporation, a business incorporated in Delaware. Now, something, guys, you know, Facebook as a company is a company that receives hundreds of suits, like, say, every month. Mm. Yeah? Yep. But this time around, they, 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 they have to fight back. Their legal department is one very, very big department 
that they have always working because there's always something. I mean, when you think about what is happening, especially now that we're going into the election period, the election mm. in the US and all of that is just next month. So Facebook, of course, Mark Zuckerberg is uh, gearing up for a lot. He, he, his legal department is one very strong one, yeah? One very strong one. Okay, and now moving on from that. Now, this is something that interests you. Now, we've seen, uh, there's been to talk of self-sustaining uh, ecosystems. You know, you have houses that can sustain themselves. You have uh, systems that can sustain themselves. But hey, how about a whole city that can sustain itself? I'll have the guys talk about this one. Let's take a look at this video, and we'll talk about it. Self-sustaining city. Now, um, I, this might be sad for a number of people, but guys, if I involve you guys, someone once said something, said, the reason why we have a weak economy, one of the reasons is that when you notice, look at the ships and the cargo planes that come into the country. They come in full and leave empty. Mm. What does that mean? Yeah. They come in full and leave empty. When we are so dependent on importing and we don't export, there's going to be a major problem. Now, when you say self-sustaining, that means that on your own, everything you need from food, technology, everything is within. This, of course, is in Asia, China. What mm -hmm. do you guys think about this self-sustaining um, yeah. neighborhood? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something, what I think about it. First of all, it is not alien to me. Um, because when I was a kid uh, back in school, we used to make bioglobes. What a bioglobe is, you, you, it's an aquarium with a fish in it, a plant, and um, it survives on its own without you interfering. You don't need to feed it, you don't need oh, to wow. change the water because the plant um, eats off of the nutrients that the fish excretes and then yes. the fish eats off of the nutrients that the plant gives. Mm. The plant gives oxygen, the fish mm. gives all of that so mm -hmm. it, it can stay there for the entire lifespan of the fish a symbiotic so, relationship exactly yeah. mm -hmm. so um that is exactly what this is mm -hmm. so you make your own energy you use your own energy you give back your own energy you yeah. recycle your own yeah. energy yeah. so it's very interesting and i I would love to live in a place like that, albeit wonderful, that it's going to be boring guys, after a couple of I'll get of back weeks. to you. Imagine I love that submission. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Let's move on now. Uh, uh, solar, we have sun in Africa. We need to learn to harness the power of the sun. We're talking about solar panel benches. Let's take a look at this one. Very fast. Titi, I'll need you on this one. Um, now, what, very, very fast. What possibilities do you see in Africa if we learn and start harnessing the power of the sun? So many amazing things can happen. And I actually know of a particular building called the Green Building mm. Uh, mm. in the Pan Atlantic University. That ah. entire building is run off solar. Mm. And they don't, they, ha they don't have generators, they don't have anything. So it is possible as long as the infrastructure can be put in place. Wonderful, wonderful, um, Titi. Imagine if. Titi, we got to go bench. now. We don't have time. I know we you have so much talk about this. But let's see the next one. Let's see the next one. <laughs> Finally, we have. Uh, uh, the, the cars, cars come in different forms and shapes, but something I know that before technology gets to civilians, the military have already tested it. Let's take a look at the shape changing wheel and what it can do. Wow. Uh, as our in-house uh, controller, general of traffic, Mary, this one is for you. What do you think? <laughs> what, uh, what, what, uh, I mean, uh, uh, mechanism, a car like this in Lagos, do you think any road can stop you with such uh, wheels that, uh, no. you know, can switch lanes? Mary? Well, the thing is, uh, those wheels are amazing and i'm not even exaggerating like i would love to have such wheels mm. easy to manage certain roads certain terrain i think it's a fantastic invention by the way uh who knows next thing we'll see our square heel uh, <laughs> wheels and i wonder how those would pan out but hey it's a very good one wonderful i know you guys i love to say much much but thank you very much for those submissions and that's it on tech update the first lap of the show is done two more laps to go don't go anywhere we will be back in a jiffy Yes, indeed. You guys are welcome to the second hour. But let me say this. Failure isn't the opposite of success. It is the part of the process mm. that you must actually acknowledge. Um, impossible is just a part of the option. So, hey, yeah. don't you worry. It's, yeah. uh, if you're going through something right now, it doesn't seem to be coming together. It's part of it. Don't feel defeated, people, no. when things don't play out quite like you want it to. Just see it as a phase. Yeah. Mm. And talking about phases, it is the second hour here on the number one breakfast show on television, Wake Up Nigeria, isn't it? It's an exciting one hour, 45 minutes coming your way. My name is Titi Laya Oyinsa. And of course, my name is Mazino Appeal. Remember, you can stream the show live at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Send in comments, please, using the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria. We're still waiting to find out exactly what's happening mm. over Costain Bridge because we mm. don't know why the Eco Bridge is so today. Mm. So do let us know by using yeah. that hashtag. We'd like to know, please.
And if you want to get onto the road and still want to watch the show, you can always use our app. You can download it for both Android or iOS. It's free and you can watch us from anywhere you are in the world. Just make yeah. sure you have an internet connection. Yeah. We'd also like to remind you once again to subscribe to our YouTube channel, TVC Entertainment. It's easy. You can see everything from past weeks, past days, last week, before now, yesterday. I, I don't know. You, you go on. Last year. Last, everything. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> and now we always have chefs in the kitchen. And this particular one gave us some really amazing videos during oh, yeah. the lockdown. In fact, my mind was blown. But you know what? Let's uh, get Mary to say who it is. Chef Belinda, that's who it is. <laughs> Chef Belinda of DJ Foods. Always a pleasure to have you in this. Thank you. She held it down. She held is it down. Okay? During the lockdown, I'm she good. held I'm okay. it down. Are you sure? I'm just excited. It's that's been a while since I've been on the I'm show. So. Like, <laughs> yes, no. But it's so, it's so amazing to have you in the studio today, Thank Chef you. Belinda. We are looking forward to what she's making today. Yeah, what yeah. she's making is going to make everybody go... Can we come to the studio? Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Mary just wow. licked her lips on national TV. Wow. She does it all the time. <laughs> don't don't no, do it. Not please, now. No. Too early. Don't tempt me. Too early, don't Mary. Don't tempt me. But check out the height on Mary, though. Mary, you ah. are such a tall woman. Mm. Wow. Incredible. All good. Anyway. Please, I'm I need jealous. Water. Yeah, so I, I need to get more heels. Don't worry, you're fine just the way you no. are. Are you sure? Yeah, Mary's just overdoing it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what was happening was, she could see a woman that the husband could not see. Mm. Was yelling at the woman. Oh. And the husband could not see. Spiritual oh. wife. Oh. Okay. Uh. All right, but then Ibrahim, of course, <laughs> is here on standby <laughs> looking sharp for the news. Hello, Ibrahim. Good morning. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hey, Actually, how are you? Very good. Thank you. Good, good weekend, everyone there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll begin with the directive of the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamo, banning personnel of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad and other tactical squads from carrying out routine patrols and other conventional low-risk duties. This includes uh, stop and search duties, checkpoints, mounting of roadblocks and traffic checks. In a statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, Frank Amba, the special squads are to now concentrate to, and respond only to cases of armed robbery, kidnapping and other violent crimes. This directive comes after findings that a few personnel of the tactical squads perpetrate all forms of illegality contrary to the standard operating procedure. Meanwhile, two operatives of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad and their civilian accomplices have been arrested by the Lagos State Police Command. This is for acts of professional misconduct, including extortion and intimidation of innocent citizens the operational vehicle of the men has been impounded while disciplinary procedure has begun. A non-teaching staff of the nation's universities are to commence a two-week warning strike today. The non-academic staff union of educational and associated institutions and the senior staff association of Nigeria universities made this known in a statement jointly signed by their leaders. The union said the decision to embark on the warning strike was in fulfillment of their resolve to begin industrial action as soon as the federal government directed universities to resume academic activities. Issues and dispute, uh, disputes include alleged inconsist inconsistencies of the integrated payroll and personal information system and the payment of salaries, non-payment of arrears of earned allowances despite various memoranda of understanding non-payment of arrears of national minimum wage and non-payment of retirement benefits to outgoing members. In less than one week to the Undo governorship election, there are reports of another clash between supporters of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party in the state. Trouble started at Obanla Junction when one of the party members or supporters was allegedly beaten, leading to reprisal attacks. The incident led to residents and passers-by running for safety Many were injured in the clash. And back to our coverage of the coronavirus pandemic, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control reported 58 new cases of coronavirus overnight, taking the country's total number of cases to 59,345. Plato recorded the highest number of cases with 18 new infections, followed by Lagos with 15 and Kisina 10, Ogun 5, Kaduna 4. So far, 50,768 people have been discharged while 1,113 people have died from COVID-19 complications. 
inbound passengers to Nigeria are complaining of challenges they face while trying to meet government's requirements on coronavirus testing on arrival from other countries. Some of the passengers have alleged that the process is a scam to extort and frustrate travelers who are eager to reconnect with their families. The federal government wants the PCR test done within 98, 96 hours before departure and preferably within 72 hours. Uh, passengers are required to remain in self-isolation and arrival, carry out a COVID-19 test in designated laboratories seven days after uh, arrival. Many passengers have expressed frustration in accessing the online portal. The cost of the test on arrival, duplicated charges and inability to trace the laboratories. A national coordinator of Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Dr. Sonia Liu, says more than 27,000 passengers from abroad came into Nigeria during the COVID-19 pandemic despite the strict procedures following the reopening of Lagos and Abuja airports. Speaking at a town hall webinar meeting organized by Nigerians in Diaspora Commission for Nigerians coming into the country, Dr. Ali pointed out that of the 27,000 passengers, 18,000 of them came in through Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, while the remaining 9,000 came in through Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. He also revealed that public laboratories are not allowed to conduct free testing as the federal government cannot afford to uh, afford it and it's not sustainable as it's not something that governments can afford so as not to run out of test kits. What loading might come for leaving up to expectations in coordinating diaspora concerns on the protocol put in place. He said that the advantage of testing before boarding is to stop people with COVID-19 from moving to Nigeria as a test is expected to be done 100, uh, 120 hours maximum before boarding. And that's a news update for this. Our up next is sports update with Mike. Welcome back. It's about time for us to take a quick look at what's happening on the covers of the newspapers this morning. Today is Monday, October 5th, 2020. We're on the cover of the Nation newspaper at this point. And the main headline says, Buhari won't succumb to threats on restructuring. Presidency warns against unpatriotic outbursts by advocates. At the top of the page there, Lagos issues flood alert over dam inflow. Kwara Kogi groan. Conflicting signals on Trump's state of health. It's been some big news throughout the weekend. Uh, NSC to become a public company, apparently. Uh, Fidelity Bank appoints OB Okwara as directors. And uh, I'll wrap it with this one. Outrage over FSARS excesses. Or Shimbajo, Songolu, Omoagege, uh, Keyamo, Chide Outfit. And uh, IG Band Squad, others from routine patrol, stop and search. That's what we have on the cover of The Nation. On the cover of The Daily Sun, it says here, IGP cuts SARS wings, band squad, tactical teams from stop and search patrol. Or Shimbajo, Nigerians hail action, security experts react. Adeboye laments Nigeria's rising debt profile, decayed infrastructure. Restructure Nigeria now, says Governor Fayemi. True federalism will silence ethnic agitations, according to Kokori. Uh, now, um, I have this particular headline here. Presidency lampoons those against Labour's suspension of strike, brands them disgruntled enemies of Nigeria. Okay, we have the Daily Independent at this point. Controversy trails scarcity of international passport booklets. PCOs accused of charging each applicant an extra 5,000 naira. We have enough booklets nationwide, say immigration. Right at the top here, my position as NGF chair, not to advance 2023 ambition, it says. And uh, sponsors of terrorism won't see New Year, according to Adebwe. Those capitalizing on labor strike to cause anarchy will be disappointed. Uh, according to uh, the presidency there. And I'll wrap with this. It says banks loan growth uh, rises by 3.5 trillion naira on CBN intervention. That's what we have on the Daily Independent. We also have the Daily Trust here with us. And it says one month after tariff hike, discos reject 1.5 billion naira worth electricity. We have cap capacity to deliver more power 
say Genkos, we're committed to improving services, say Discos, and consumer groups want a stop to tariff hike. Now, of course, there is a, an infographic there, as is often on the daily trust, and it gives a breakdown of power generation supply and rejection in the past 31 days. And uh, it is quite apparent, those numbers there. If you want to uh, take a better look, you should make sure you get the daily trust. IGP bans FSARs from road stop and search duties. And 27,000 passengers arrived in Nigeria despite strict procedures. That's what we have on the cover of the daily trust. And uh, that's all we have on the headlines in the dailies for this hour. We'll be taking it uh, to the kitchen right now. The chef is set to make something tasty. Okay, thank you so much. It's always awesome to have Chef Belinda in the kitchen with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, as you can see, Titi, the spread this morning is enough to blow your mind. <laughs> she has a double dish for us, so to speak. And so for breakfast this morning, we are having... Buka style food, <laughs> buka style rice with moi moi. Buka style rice with moi moi. Just take a look at that spread. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, let's start. Let's talk about the ingredients. What are we okay. making, Izo? For the ingredients, we have our rice, locally made Nigerian rice. Okay. Then we have our meat, assorted meat. You know, in buka, the fun of selecting the meat yourself, you point, you have shaki, you have pomo, you have randabal, you have goat's meat, and there's cow leg there. Okay. We have that sauteed, then we ah, have ah. fish. Now, wow. We have fish as well, and we have eggs, and then um, uh, pepper mix, uh -huh. and then uh, semi-bleached oil, kind hmm. of bleached a bit. Hmm. Then for the moemoe, we have fish. This is mixed already, blended the beans with pepper, um, crayfish, rodo, shombo, and all that, onions. Hmm. Then we have a fish that will go in, hmm. vegetable oil, and the stock. Hmm. Gen, gen. The seasoning and spice, of course. And our local delicacy, iru, our very local Wait, spice. you're actually going to make this with iru? Yes, yes, I'm making is, it with iru. Is it going into the rice or into the moment? Into the sauce. Into hey, the, sauce. the ingredients are on your screen right now. Buka style <laughs> steamed rice <laughs> with ayamase sauce and moi moi. 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 Yeah. As you can see, quite a number of things there. For the moi moi, we are making use of fish, garlic, beans, ginger, pepper, onions, vegetable oil, crayfish, seasoning, leaf for wrapping, just as she uh, showed us just now. So that, those are the ingredients for the moi moi. Ha! Now, wow. So we'll start with that now. Okay. Sharp, sharp, no time. No time. Um, some stock cubes, please. But it's better okay. you start with oil when you are making your moi moi because the, so that it won't float. Two. Where the beans? How, how much? I added two spoons, two of this spoon. No, the beans. How this many? This is one derica. One derica of yes. beans, then two spoonfuls spoons of, of oil. oil. This oil. Okay, is that's big. cooking spoon. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, it's better I start with the oil so that it won't float when you add water. Okay. You let the oil sink in. Into the yes, mixture into itself. Into the mixture. Let okay. it just blend in. Okay. Then, before you start adding, especially the stock and every other thing. So please. Um, two stock cubes okay. will be fine. Okay. I didn't know you wanted me to do that. Yes, okay. uh, we are cooking together. Ah, okay. Oh. It's all hands <laughs> on deck this morning. I'm not surprised that the, <laughs> there's a lot to cook this morning. Yes. Okay, so, so there yeah. we go. Two stock cubes is fine. Yes, two stock then cubes. Then we'll get there. our salt. Salt. While okay. I add. But we'll not add the salt yet because I'm adding the fish now because we have stock. Okay. So after we add the stock, we okay. taste, then we'll know the quantity of salt. So is the stock replacing water? Yes, it's blessing water. But are you sure that stock will be enough for this? If it's not enough, then we then add we water. Then we add water. Yes. Okay, let's see. But I think... I think it's going to be enough. Ah, you're it's the chef now. <laughs> <laughs> you're the boss. It's eh? going to be enough. So, wow. you know, I like it when your mama is busy, you know. Very busy. You see, busy. One spoonful <laughs> of fish, beans, egg, yeah. everything. So, yes, oh okay. I think we'll need that's more water That's meat stock, here. though. Yes, that's meat stock. Okay. Now, I've, I hardly ever hear people say they are putting chicken inside moi moi. Is there a reason for that? There's no reason, no. Anything can happen in the kitchen. No. If you I, like chicken, you add it there. I I've think I'm going to try it someday because yes, since we put in eggs, your chicken and yeah, then put it there yeah. straight away. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen more fish, I've seen pomo, I've beef, seen every beef, other thing corn except beef. Chicken. Okay. Yes, but never chicken. Mm -hmm. If I know now, I would have used chicken. Ah, I didn't know you have not seen chicken before. No, I've not seen chicken moi moi before. <laughs> and I've never and even I've tried it. Chicken. So this is good now. So we'll have to test it okay. before we know what quantity of salt, salt we're going to put in. Okay. You know, raw beans, it's one kind, one kind. So just taste it with style and then. Okay. 
Okay. Have you ever had your child tell um, you know putting salt for you? My child. Yes. Huh. Like, child can you hear me put salt? Okay, yes. mommy. <laughs> eh, no, no, no. <laughs> they know. Eh, they don't try that. <laughs> okay, so we'll add some salt now. Please okay, do. so how much salt are we putting in? Ah, it's not like you want to. So you want to do like? Yeah, I want the to one do like asking. a child now. Hmm. 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 Is this enough? Please let me wedge it to my spoon. Why are people in the corner? Okay, uh -huh. it's your spoon that is inverted. You don't have to just pour. <laughs> okay. Is spoon. it okay? Yes. Let's start from there. Beautiful. Let's start from there. So okay. it's sharp, sharp, sharp. I get the leaves, so. Ah, no, we are here I together. I don't understand. I'm going get to get the leaves. We will wrap it together. Yeah, I will teach you if you we'll don't know how to do it. I know how to do it. <laughs> ah, you know how to do right. it. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. okay. Where we are going? Sharp, mm. sharp, sharp. Yeah. Ah. Awesome. If you don't know how to ah, make, so you can wrap this. I say if you don't know how to make money in my house, then you are not from my family. Wow, that's good. <laughs> I had the mind when I was burying the tail. I knew something will come out. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Yes. Oh yeah, let's see. So the pocket there. is ready? Yes, mm -hmm. you feel. So oh, you sharp, spread sharp. your own. Me, I just put my own one of the one inside. Okay, let me try your own stuff. Let's see. Like this. Mm, yes, okay. I do the spread. Okay. Let me look for a scooping spoon. Uh -huh. I have a scooping spoon. Okay. Hmm. So Yours then me, looks like a funnel. Uh, yes, that's the idea. So that, and you know, the secret of this thing for it to respond to you very well, put it in the freezer before you use it. Really? Yes. So what does it do? It will, it will make the leaf fold easily, make it respond well. You see, you can't hear that crack, crack mm. too much. Yeah. Every day we learn, but I used well, to think I the know. crack is the one that makes you know that you've gotten it. At times it tears. Oh, At times yeah. the crack will just make it tear. So the freezing actually puts it together, but yes, you would have thought the freezing will make it tear apart. No. Wow, together. wow, that, that's that a tip for you guys. See lamb, so you see this spoon? <laughs> oh God. Cutty <laughs> Chef Belinda. <laughs> freeze your freeze, leaves. Freeze and yes, bring freeze them, mm -hmm. then bring them out. But of course, you let them thaw before yes, you use them. Yes, yes, you thaw them before yeah. you use so them. So freeze before I you can, use them. We are good to go. They will work know, better. Once we are cooking more, more, you just allow your water to boil and you put it immediately. Ah, let's not forget, so you have to put the stems of yes, the leaves there are stems inside. On that so, so you can see the stems, they've boiled there are stems already. On that but you know what? There's a lot to learn in the kitchen this morning and we'll just do a lot of explaining sharp, but sharp, the sharp, much sharp. you've seen <laughs> catch up with us we'll be back after this break it's wake up nigeria i was trying to tell you how i'm going to try and work my ab my, my calf muscles and everything so i'm planning on an entire leg session for the You're entire showing month me your legs on TV. yes you know i have a thing <laughs> for my legs but i should stop touching myself tell you what we'll do <laughs> today on this week in our history segment, we want to take a trip down memory lane mm. and let's tell you something very interesting about the history of that saying, yeah, sleep tight. Mm. Isn't it? So I've been, you know, you talked a bit about having good rest mm -hmm. earlier on. And one of the best ways you can have good rest is to have a really great bed to sleep in. Ah. But do you know the history of beds? Mm. Watch this. Oh, yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. Sleep on it, she said. Yeah. You know, it's it's so crazy um, that um, the fact that you had a higher status in life mm -hmm. was what, you know, determined Decided whether you how, had a mm, higher yeah. bed. Um, I remember well, growing up and always liking jumping on those spring be beds. Yeah, you know, boing, to... boing, boing, and you could actually hear it. Are so. you sure it's boing, <laughs> boing, oh, we go? Wait, go, wait, go, uh, depends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But that was beautiful. Absolutely oh. enjoyed it. Thank oh, you very much, thank Titi. You. All right, mm. and I'm sure you enjoyed it as well. Mm. Uh, well, do stay tuned. We've got more coming your way. Um, let's do a short break. And when we get back, more Wake Up Nigeria. BJ Foods. I'm oh. here. I'm here. Uh, in fact, <laughs> she wants to blow our minds. I have Davido's uh, Blow My Mind featuring Chris Brown playing in the background. Because today, the oh. meal just keeps expanding. Expanding, no. We started off style. with uh, uh, Buka rice. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, Moi Moi, moi, moi. was also added. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, there's a sauce, the Ayamase sauce. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, we have coleslaw again. Coleslaw. You know, in Buka, we have options. They'll say, which one do you want? Uh, coleslaw, salad, the owa. Mm, you have a good moi, point. Moi, 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 two hundred uh, naira. Yes. Uh, Fumani Fum rice, hundred naira. naira. But more, con, shaki. Yeah. Yes, yes, no, 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 that one. That no, one. Yeah, okay. that's the style. And then you have coleslaw. Ah, you have coleslaw. Have coleslaw. Naira. <laughs> Breakfast is set. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, so far, so good. We have our moi moi uh, cooking. Bubbling fine. Yes, so. And then afterwards, uh, it's time for us to make the sauce. We also have the rice boiling elsewhere. 
Uh, don't ask us where, but it's boiling <laughs> elsewhere. Boiling. And you'll definitely you see, see it at uh -huh. the end of the show. Okay, so now we are working on the sauce. That's the oil. Yes. Palm oil. Yes. It's been bleached. Bleached already. Uh, that's the reason for this color. Mm. So you can take a look at it. Not fully bleached, though, partially, because I don't want to have a black oil altogether. Okay. So okay, just... but it's because of the ayamase effect. Yes, yes, the okay. effect. Okay. Sure. So what's the first thing we're doing? This Besides the oil. This way, you know you are the one. Ah, you know this you one are that you are the... switching positions. <laughs> It's you that is supposed to be here. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be do. going and coming, you know don't worry. <laughs> okay, so I put yes. in the iru. The iru. Yes. Okay. Then and I have to do stay. the stirring yes. too. Yes, stir it. Today, today, I'm the real sous chef. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we stir it yes. in. I don't have to keep stirring now. Mm, not really. Mm, I think it's Once good it like this. Once it has gone in, yeah. Yeah, it's gone in. So next you add... The pepper. The pepper oh. mix. Okay. Yeah. So what's in the pepper in mix? In there we have... Um, the pepper wasn't very ripe. It was the green pepper, the rodo itself. Okay. It wasn't ripe. Then we okay. have onions, shombo, a little tomatoes. Okay. Then okay. Because I can see onion. red in it. That's yes, why yes, I was yes. So the the shombo. Just a little, the yes, shombo. shombo is red. Then okay. others are green. Okay. So do I put this in now? Yes, put it in. Okay. Yeah. So, there we go. Today's breakfast day. Hmm. <laughs> Complete selection. <laughs> Three thousand naira no. per plate, <laughs> two thousand naira for efforts, mm -hmm. and one thousand naira for content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy, see that? Mm. I Actually going to be putting water. Okay. The stock with the tomatoes. Ah. Yes. Okay, so I, this I is pre-boiled. Yes, it's pre-boiled so that it will be dry. Ooh. We don't need too much water in Ayamashi sauce. We don't need okay. Too much water. So how do you pre-boil so. it? The tomato. After blending, I just put it on fire. Then add the stock to it and cover it. Everything dried up. After after blending it, you add yes. the stock yes. until it dries up. Yes. Okay. So it soaks in the yes, stock very well. If you, if you have tasted it, it has. Good okay. Taste. Okay. So we'll continue with the cooking. I know at some point we we'll put in the fish and yes, then oh my and gosh, that orishi rishi. And the orishi rishi, yeah, oh. that's it. In fact, <laughs> let me put it where everybody can see, so you can understand my orishi rishi mood. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, Mike. I hope you'll be able to concentrate on the conversation <laughs> you're about to have right now. Because this Orishi Rishi is going to blow your mind. Blow your mind. <laughs> like that kitchen that they put you want to leave that kitchen now, now, now. All right. Anyways, wonderful work that they are doing there. It's time for Monday morning motivation. Now, we have uh, one of uh, Nigeria's uh, leading uh, business, uh, of course, and uh, leadership coaches, uh, Tess Aromuset, Aromesuli. Now, as someone who is passionate about changing the narrative by helping companies enter new markets and build new networks. Now, today she'll be talking about finding emotional resilience in difficulty. It's great to have you, Tess. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Wow, you look like you should be in the studio here. Yeah, you look very well set <laughs> for this. How was your weekend, by the way? That's, it was cool. Um, okay. You know, the usual weekend stuff, but it was nice. Okay, all right, wonderful. And so Monday thank you morning. Thank for the compliments. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Now, it, uh, look, there, have never, there has never been more difficult times for most of people living than this period. I mean, for the past six, seven, eight months, we have seen unseen things. This is difficulty at its peak. Now, talking about resilience, that is something that a lot of us at different times have had to fight with. How do you um, steady the ship and keep calm and find emotional resilience in times as such? Right, thank you. So, yeah, I want to so, so echo that thought, as in nobody saw this coming, and so nobody was prepared, and nobody has been on this path before, but nobody has the blueprint of what to do when you are in a nation like this. And so it's usually a time to look in words. Um, Grouply, in built or innate ability to actually be resilient, to be resilient. And so when you find yourself in a situation like this, where, you know, if it was something that someone had gone through before, or we met some people on the earth who had gone through this pandemic, we could probably just go to them and be like, okay, so when the last pandemic happened, how did you cope? What did you do and get lessons from them? But this one hit us, bam, like a shock. And before we knew it, you know, everyone was just scattered and just, should I say, shattered inward and trying to just make 
um, the most out of it. So in finding your feet in a crisis, and that's why we're talking about emotional resilience today. In finding your feet in a crisis, emotional resilience basically is talking about taking the skill of produ um, positivity, um, um, should I say a positive attitude towards any situation you find yourself in. Hmm. And if you ask me, that is not a skill you go to school to learn. Hmm. That is a skill that is built in you mentally. And so when you are positive about issues, I know it's easier said than done, it is. but a resonant person. So if you think about an elastic band, just to give some context to the definition of um, um, emotional resonance, if you think of an elastic band, you know how sometimes you just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling. No matter what you do, how far you go, it's either that elastic band gives way and breaks, or it comes back to its original state. Now, the one who has the ability to come back to his original state, despite all the stress that he's going through, that one is said to have good emotional resilience. Hmm. So if I ask, if I go into now talking about how you cope with it in crisis, there are two things. So emotional resilience or crisis come in different phases. What may be a, a oh my God, crisis to me, may just be like, oh, are you serious to you? So, but generally speaking, when you have developed emotional resilience, it means then that you are in tune with self, so that you have the ability to actually look at situations, a situation, and then retrace to find, to find out what is causing this crisis. Where is it coming from? Why am I feeling the way I feel? And based on that, I can pinpoint what the situation or what the, the, uh, the cause or should I say the stressor, or the, um, for lack of a better word now, the thing that is ticking or causing that emotional resonance, uh, that crisis to come. Mm. So if you find yourself in that situation, there are two things you can do. Just like the elastic band, you can either expand with the crisis, with the mindset of coming back to your original self because you're emotionally resilient and balanced, mm. or you can just give way under it and just snap. <laughs> And that's the one we don't want anyone to do because that's what causes a lot of mental issues, depression, you name it, and all the other suicidal things that have been going on. You but see, as oh, a balanced person, okay, go on. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk. You see, um, the, it's it's like you said, it's easier said than done. You can stretch, you can stretch, and then go back. But how do we build? Now people ask for practical steps. How do we build these muscles, these emotional muscles? Because considering maybe I lost my job. Let's be practical. I lost my job. There's no food. There's no way to maybe feed the family. If I'm a young guy, maybe even feed myself or, you know, take care of um, issues and responsibilities and all of that. How can I be resilient emotionally when physically I can't even find a way to maybe even feed? Yeah. So remember in the beginning we said it's a skill. Mm. All of us are born with the ability. Well, how well you hone yours is mm. up to you. But I'll give you a practical thing. There's a, a, um, there's a worksheet I use, which is called the Life Blueprint Worksheet. And anyone can do this at home. It's very practical. So first and foremost, something hits you. If it's a loss of someone, a dear person, I mean, you have to go through that process of grieving and just go through that cycle. But you don't let the cycle swallow you. But if it's an outward thing, like you lost your job, or your business is not going as you planned, or things are just, you know, you are not just in control of, of stuff, and it's getting to you emotionally. Therefore, you are not able to lead your business successfully. One of the things that I recommend, and which I do myself sometimes, is to sit down and look at the life, life blueprint. Life blueprint is how I expected things to go, how, how I had planned things to go. You know, when I said that in three months I'll do this, you know, just the whole life blueprint that I have on the one hand. Then on the other hand, I have my current reality. So mm. I plan to do this in two months. But today, six months down the line, I haven't even done it. Not because I'm not hardworking, not because I don't have the skill, not because I'm not able to, but just because life happened. So you have your life blueprint and you have your current reality. So life blueprints, at a time when you're in such a crisis, you put it at the back of your mind because really, although it's the yardstick, but right now, it's causing you a lot of stress because you are striving towards it, you put it away. You stay with your current reality. Now, this is your current reality. This current reality that I have, I have two options. 
which of the things that are causing me distress is within my control. If hmm. there's something, if there's something within my control, I begin to make action plans. Hmm. I begin to make action plan. Let's stay with the example of someone who lost their job or someone whose business is not working right. Okay. I lost my job. Current reality. That's my, my blueprint. By this time, I was not planning to lose my job, but I've lost it anyway. So blueprint, go to the back. Current reality, you come to the front. Current reality, I've lost my job. What are the options? I can either find another job or I start a business. Which one is within my control and which one do I feel uh, do I resonate more with? If it's to start a business and I start to research, I start to put action plan in place to see what and what I need to do to start a business. Or if it's to find another job, I bring out my CV and I adjust it and I start to, I beg to apply. You know, hmm. so you have, you create action plans based on your current reality. A lot of us get stuck in our blueprints because we're like, oh, by this time, I should have been this. By that time, I had thought I'd be this. Well, really, your current reality is staring in your face. And so that's where you begin to develop the ability because what you are using your emotional resonance for is actually for you to have an integrated and a balanced life. Wow, thank you so to much, Tess. To be able Tess. to adapt. Adapt, so wonderful, that's what it is wonderful. Today. I love yes. how you rounded this up, what you said. Those are practical steps, action plans, blueprints, reality. I love that. Thank you very much. We'll continue from this next time. That is something someone can learn from blueprints. Don't forget that. Blueprint, blueprint reality. Take blueprint behind, put reality in front, and then take action plans. Thank you very much for that, Tess. That was uh, yes. really some motivation this Monday morning. All right, that's it. Uh, the second lap of the show is done. I don't know why Mary's clapping her hands in the kitchen, but by the third hour, she definitely won't be there. I'll probably be there. Uh, there's still more to come. Stay with us. We will be right back. Do you know that the longest English word is 190,000 letters long? Now, that would be the chemical name for tin, right? Tin, tin, ti titan. Titan. Ti titan. 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 Yeah, okay. Something like that. But the fact is, in yeah. actual fact, it is um, 189,819 letters long. Okay. And its short form is called methylphenidate. Wow. It is an essential pro protein, protein for the yeah. elasticity of muscles, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, science student, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Professor, I'm Professor sorry. Mazzino in the building. Hmm. Yeah. Now you see why it's important for you to always just stay <laughs> tuned, because you get to see moments like that. You just don't know what you might learn. Where will you use that information is the uh, question. Yeah, I'm a botanist, I've never used that. <laughs> You never know. You never know. Great to still have you guys with us here for the next 45 minutes. So stay with us all the same. My name is Mazino Appeal. And I'm Titi Laya So Make sure you don't miss this great experience. Stream the show live if you have to leave the house. That's tvcentertainment.tv. And of course, Facebook at TVC Connect. You can always send in those comments using the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Absolutely. So the TVC app is still available for download at both Android and iOS store. It enables you to watch us from absolutely anywhere you might be in the world. Absolutely anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> we also like it. <laughs> Who are you so imitating like just now? Because, you know, it's, um, unfortunately yeah. right now he's got... Um, the coronavirus. Corona. But yeah. Yeah, the virus. So make sure you wear your mask everywhere. Yeah. He's got the virus. Oh, sorry. Uh, but we would like to remind you once again to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can catch up on things like what we just did right now. Uh, TVC <laughs> Entertainment is what you need to search for on YouTube. All right, now, so let's check out what we have left on the show today. I'm still on the show, what we have coming up. I was just thinking of how many Man U and Liverpool fans wow. found themselves in that position. Wow. <laughs> Imagine themselves. Jürgen Klopp and Ole Gunnar Socks here in front of them, and they are going, what were you thinking? But finally, Mike, let's talk about that score. Line for about this this time, my brain will stand by for no, 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 we have to talk about, about this one. <laughs> Francis, big shout out to Francis. Some people call him grandpa, but I call him the elder. He's our director this morning. He has told us that we have to move to news now. No, he talk about this match. Ibrahim, that was the weekend. He doesn't want to. I don't know why. Seven minutes. He has a thing for Liverpool. Hold your mic. Off <laughs> all the mic, all the mic, off all of it. All the mic, all the mic. He has it. Seven nil, was it? Or oh, seven what? Seven, seven two. two. Seven two. And oh. six one. Cool. <laughs> Ibrahim, go ahead, please. Thank you. <laughs> the director has him. He has it in mind. That's why he's keeping the the, the shot on you so far. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> 
All right, we begin with the directive of the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, banning personnel of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad and other tactical squads from carrying out routine patrols and other conventional low-risk duties. These include stop and search duties, checkpoints, mounting of roadblocks and traffic checks. In a statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, Frank Mba, the special squads are to now concentrate and respond only to cases of armed robbery, kidnapping and other violent crimes. This directive comes after findings that a few personnel of the tactical squads perpetrate all forms of illegality contrary to the standard operating procedure. Meanwhile, two operatives of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad and their civilian accomplice have been arrested by the Lagos State Police Command. This is for acts of professional misconduct, including extortion and intimidation of innocent citizens. The operation vehicle, uh, the operational vehicle rather, of the men has been impounded while disciplinary procedure has begun. Non-teaching staff in the nation's universities are to commence a two-week warning strike today. The Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Associated Institutions and the Senior Staff Association of Nigeria uh, universities made this known in a statement jointly signed by their uh, leaders. The unions used the decision to embark on the warning strike uh, was in fulfillment of their resolve to begin industrial action as soon as the federal government directed universities to resume academic activities. Issues in disputes include alleged inconsistencies of the integrated payroll and personal information system and the payment of salaries, non-payment of arrears, of earned allowances despite various memoranda of understanding, non-payment of arrears of national minimum wage and non-payment of retirement benefits to outcome members. And less than one week till the Undo governorship election, there are reports of another clash between supporters of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party in the state. Trouble started at Obanla Junction when one of the party supporters was allegedly beaten, leading to reprisal attacks. The incident led to residents and passers-by running for safety. Many are injured in the clash. And the Nigeria Center for Disease Control reported 58 new cases of coronavirus overnight, taking the country's total number of cases to 59,345. Plato recorded the highest number of cases with 18 new infections, followed by Lagos with 15 and Kisina 10, Ogun 5, Kaduna 4. So far, 50,768 people have been discharged, while 1,113 people have died from COVID-19 complications. Inbound passengers to Nigeria are complaining of challenges they face while trying to meet government's requirements on coronavirus testing and arrival from other countries. Some of the passengers have alleged that the process is a scam to extort and frustrate travelers who are eager to reconnect with their families. The federal government wants the PCR test done within 96 hours before departure and preferably within 72 hours. Passengers are required to remain in self-isolation and arrival and carry out a COVID-19 test in designated laboratories seven days after arrival. Many passengers have expressed frustration in accessing the online portal. The cost of the test on arrival duplicated charges and inability to tr uh, trace the laboratories. A national coordinator of presidential task force on COVID-19, Dr. Sunny Aliyu, says more than 27,000 passengers from abroad came into Nigeria during the COVID-19 pandemic despite the strict procedures following the reopening of Lagos and Abuja airports. Speaking at town hall webinar meeting organized by Nigerians in Diaspora Commission for Nigerians coming into, Niger into the country, Dr. Aliyu pointed out that of the 27,000 passengers, 18,000 of them came in through Motala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, while the remaining 9,000 came in through Nandi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. He also revealed that public laboratories are not allowed to conduct free testing as the federal government cannot afford it and it's not sustainable as, quote, it's not something that government can afford so as not to run out of test kits. While loading night come for leaving up to expectations and coordinating diaspora concerns on the protocol put in place, he said that the advantage of testing before boarding is to stop people with COVID-19 from moving to Nigeria as a test is expected to be done 120 hours maximum before boarding. 
And as it is today on Wake Up Nigeria, next is sports with Mike. It's time for the electrifying musical performance we promised. And we have here Samuel David Chinoyerim, uh, popularly known as Dak. He is a singer, songwriter, and a record producer. So I want to get that clear. Um, Dak, is it D-A-C-H, like Dak or Dutch? Which one? Yeah, D-A-C-H, Dutch. Dutch. Okay, yeah. so it's Dutch. All right, so what song are you going to be performing for us? Um, I'll be performing Spotlight. Spotlight? Spotlight, yeah. Ah, yeah, you wrote 20... the song yourself? Yeah, I did. Okay, I did. so what's the song by? about? Um, it's about, okay. Is it about my love interest. <laughs> Your love interest? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Why do I feel like you got the title from Osha? Hmm? Spotlight. You remember that song, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right, so, um, Dak, how did you come about your name, though? I'm just curious. Okay, um, they're from my original names, David okay. Chinoyerum. Yeah. Oh, so David Chinoyerum. Yeah. Was it someone that first named you that, or you came up with it yourself? Okay, um... It's a long story, but um, my friend Clint is a producer. So when I came to Lagos from Port Harcourt in 2018, at first when I started, I was I was with Nonye, okay. Nonye for my name. So he was like, ah, Nonye is feminine. Please let's do something that looks like you, <laughs> and looks like the music you make. So after a lot of back and forth, we came up with a lot of names, and we had to stick with Dutch because it sounded like something. Sounded like my music. Okay, so, so uh, yeah. over to Dope. you, Dutch. We can't wait to hear Spotlight. Take it away. Thank you. Maybe I should write you a story about how we've worlds when all I had was your hand. For real. <laughs> your smile was my magician. All I have is your hand. I can never forget. <laughs> How you did everything for me Working hard, you're my company How can I throw that part away? No, they fear I am here to stay How you did everything for me Working hard, you're my company How can I throw that part away? No, they fear I am here to stay You were my spotlight I am a superstar I'm shining so bright because of your light Baby, the money can change me Baby, the fame can change me Baby, I'll be used forever Make you just remember Say, you are my number one Baby, I'm my number one I know go get another one Whether we or I know go for your heart I know go let you down but Baby, you're my number one whether we share up or I It was you and me together When I had no one's attention I would treat you like my treasure Cause you really are my treasure I would be your one You would be my only Baby, have no fear I will leave you lonely How yeah. you did everything for me Working hard, you're my company how can I throw that part away? No, that's why I'm here to stay. How you did everything for me? Working hard, you're my company. How can I throw that part away? No, that's why I'm here to stay. You were my spotlight. I am a superstar. I'm shining so bright because of your light. Baby, the money can change me. Baby, the fame can change me. Baby, I'll be yours forever. Make you just remember. Say, you are my number one. Baby, I'm my number one. Baby, I'm my number one. I don't go get another one. Oh, With a rich or a poor I don't go for your hand. I don't go let you down. But baby, I'm my number one. With a rich or a poor
That's beautiful dodge there. What a performance, giving everybody the opportunity to blow right here on Wake Up Night Year. Well, hey, that's what we do. Welcome now to our SME segment, and it's time for, well, we said it already, SME. And we have been joined by the MD of the Elite Beauty Products Limited, Mr. Folabi Mati. Well, it's nice to have you here. Thank you very us, much. Sir. Ah, uh, I've got so many questions for you, sir, so I hope you're ready for me. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, um, first of all, it's called the Elite Beauty Products Limited, yes? yes? Yeah, so how long have you guys been in business? Uh, by the grace of God, we started this business uh, February 2010. 2010? Yes. Wow, that's 11 years already about. Yes. Oh, wow. Now, 10 years, actually. Now, um, it's always very interesting to follow a business from when it starts to where it is. And that's the essence of today's um, uh, discourse, because I want people to learn from the steps that you have taken, especially for the kind of or line of business which you are in, which is beauty products. I always like to ask people what informed the need to go into this kind of business because that's the main thing. People actually have to identify the fact that there's a need or a demand somewhere. So how do I fill in that gap? So what was it for you? Actually, the beauty industry um, is full of uh, many products. Mm -hmm. um, in 2010, we looked through all the products in the market and we found out that uh, most of them are not meeting the, uh, the demands of the people, the yearnings of the people, okay. the needs of the people. Yeah. Um, most of uh, the products are made up of chemicals, yeah. and uh, we found out that uh, the chemicals are most of the time have side effects on the skin and all the. So we came up with the idea that um, we must have product that is. 100% uh, uh, natural, 100% oh. herbal. So and, you're uh, saying your products are 100% natural? 100% herbal, 100% oh. herbal. And the beauty of it is that all the herbal inputs are, from, are uh, uh, sourced locally. Mm. There's no importation of any uh, material. What are some of products. these, if you don't mind, some of these um, natural herbal resources that you guys have right, to use? Right, We have uh, already uh, the traditional way of uh, producing uh, herbal products, uh, like uh, producing it from uh, uh, cocoa pot potash, oh, okay. and uh, producing it from uh, palm, palm, palm kernel oil. Oh. Um, but in addition to that, that has been the tradition. Mm. But in addition to that, we have uh, come up with uh, added value mm -hmm. by um, putting uh, shea butter ah. in our product, shea butter, is very friendly to the skin. Mm -hmm. It protects the skin from the uh, sun. Mm -hmm. When it is dry, the sun is always high yeah. uh, in our environment. But uh, the effect of shea butter is to cool down, to, to sub, uh, subdue the effect of the harsh, uh, mm -hmm. um, the intensity of the sun. Yeah. So um, again, we have also added uh, essential oils, okay. like uh, lemongrass oil and the citronella oil. Okay. This lemongrass oil we produce from our, our, our factory. We extract oil from lemongrass uh, uh, leaves. Now, th um, th these are very interesting bits that you're letting us know. Now, yeah. my question now is, how did you exactly identify that this is a demand from people? Did you do some sort of research at all? And basically, is research essential in any business? Yes, yes. Our essential, I mean, our research is uh, based on one-on-one -on -one discussion. Okay. We discuss. We are in the. We are in the. We are in the. We are in the society. We are in the. We are even in the market. Yeah. And we hear from people their complaints. Feedback uh, and all. Feedback from people and. Uh, uh, especially on the fact that uh, they are tired of uh, this chemical soap, yeah. or, you know, some of them bleaches, some of them. But this is a product that uh, uh, it, it tones uh, gradually with okay. time, naturally, you know, naturally, so, yeah. naturally. So we have to sit down and say, how, what can we do to, you know, uh, meet demand, the, the okay. demands of the people. Okay. okay. So that's how we come about. So the let's product. take a look at your business structure now, from where you started to where yeah. you are right, right now. How big has your business grown? Um, uh, uh, after the after we started in 2010, we decided to employ hands okay. because it was uh, essentially um, family uh, business. Mm -hmm. But 
along the line, we found out that because of the because of funding, mm -hmm. we need to bring in some people. Okay. Um, you no, know, we bring up some people that will help us investors, inf investors, yeah. and uh, so uh, along the line also. We feel that uh, we should bring some people that, uh, especially in, the, in management, uh -huh. and so uh, we recruited production manager. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we gave him what the idea of uh, what we need, mm. the idea, what we need, the vision for uh -huh. the, the vision business. for the something, and he keyed into it, yeah. and uh, we started uh, the, the, the the production. So, so along the line also. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigerian Export Promotion Council oh, came up and uh, was drumming for uh, Nigerian produced products. In, in, indigenous products. And at a stage, uh, we among the products that were taken to Togo nice. for um, solo exhibition of made in Nigerian nice. products. So that was in now. 2013. Do you think that if you hadn't expanded, let's use that word, uh, trying to get new investors, trying to get proper hands, production manager, like you mentioned. Do you think that you would have been up for such um, a nomination by the Nigerian export? Uh, not at all. Yeah. Not so at that all is essential for exactly, any business, exactly, isn't it? Exactly. Ah, exactly. Okay. You must, you, even as small as you, your company may be, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't do it solely. Make sure you tap also into the ideas of other people okay. so that, you know, Everything together will work for, hmm. for, for, for the development of the, of the company. So now you're exporting? And yeah, yeah, we are exporting, hmm. especially the West African West coast. West African coast, yes. okay. And uh, we, 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 the, Niger, the same Nigerian Export Promotion Council took us to Niger, okay. took us to Ghana, and uh, in all these countries, our products made uh, excellent uh, hmm. appearance and uh, uh, debug. Okay, so we spoke about feedback from earlier, but I'm going to go back to that now. So you have products across West Africa, yes. and I'm sure people who use it must have also ideas that they would like to give as well. Exactly. How do you manage all of these information that's coming on, and how does it go back into your Exactly. Products? As a matter of fact, where we started, especially our Haba soap, mm -hmm. when we started, we, 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 we thought we were, doing, we were just producing ordinary soap. Mm. We thought we were just producing ordinary soap, mm. but uh, the feedback from the market shows that uh, this this soap is so great, it's so efficient in treating uh, skin diseases. Mm. Um, we didn't have in mind that it would be a soap that would uh, cure boil, mm. that it would cure Enzyme, mm. that it would cure all sorts of skin diseases. But you know, we all, we get phone calls from people feedback. saying, ah, "This okay. soap is doing this. This soap is doing that." Ah, okay. Wow. When we saw that, when we noticed that, then we started, you know, putting other ingredients that will Help add value fortify. to the soap. Well, that's yes. fantastic, Mr. Afolabi. Thank it's always good much. to have people like you here on the show to help us Thank see how much. businesses can grow, especially here in Nigeria. How big a potential we have when it comes to export as well. And we're glad to have you, like I said. And we're looking forward to how big and how well massive your expansion is going to go even across Africa. It's going to, we, 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 we are going we want to expand further now oh, we have uh, in 2015 or mm -hmm. 2015 there yeah. about we approached wow. we approached a bank of industry and, and the sure, bank I'm of industry i'm sure gave us i'm sure that we, we don't have too much time unfortunately okay. but i'd like to bring you back again and we'll have that conversation if you right. don't mind right. but thank you very thank much you. mr Folabi. always thank a pleasure to much. have you do stay tuned thank hey you. we have more coming your way um the kitchen is all mm, beautiful smells and everything coming from there when we get back you're going to be enjoying that Welcome back, everyone. Ooh. It's been an amazing Monday so far. The back discussions are just crazy in this a place. Laughs. A lot of laughs. And those laughs come up whenever there's some good food in the kitchen. Mm. And we're trying you. to like negotiate who's going to taste the food. Yes, and what everything. time today? What? Nego what? Is it you? All of you. There's been a. I just received a call. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, that's why last. Guess what? I was trying to get last. You people move out to, to take <laughs> pictures of the garden. Wow. So the schedule of things have changed. Wow. You go to the garden to take pictures. Mm -hmm. You may leave just here now. You move to the garden. Because those pictures are important. We are using it's it to okay. commemorate the 60th anniversary wow. of Nigeria. Okay. Wow. So you need to focus. The and food focus on pictures. looks and smells. Oh, guys, look at your food, food, food. You are walking, um, you are taking on food. We're, we're going to have a very interesting conversation soon. Mm. But um, what what has been trending no, okay, over the weekend? No, okay, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot. Yeah. Some people responded. And the hashtag enters movement. 
What I love about what is happening is the response from the federal government, which was almost immediate, mm -hmm. and that is what we would like. You mm. know, so um, the, like we mentioned during the news, FSARS and all that, they've been asked to desist from low risk mm. uh, you activities, know, activities uh, like searching cars and all of that and all of that. So you know, but one thing I always say is they they, they, they are still they are still the policemen. Yeah. They can take off the SARS and use the normal this is so the point is generally we want a reform of the police force that's what people are crying for mm. apart from SARS, the reform of police force and we hope that uh, with this response from the federal government mm -hmm. and uh, other well-meaning individuals and high um, uh, placed individuals mm -hmm. that something this is going to be something that is uh, you know the, the route to a final mm. uh, you know um, resolution mm. okay of yeah. this crisis. Hopefully. So that's what's trending. So people have even responded. Uh, there's a tweet here. Someone uh, put up this tweet under our uh, uh, tweet. says, uh, at Simply Kelly, she says, it's easy to say, but you are online and see everything happening. You can help her by showing people's tweets on your TV. We do. Yeah. Like we're reading out yours now. We, we might show yours. Mm -hmm. By showing, uh, uh, in case, uh, say in Nigeria, we they show the good size. No, no, the good size. You will listen to news. Is it a good size? I see a news. But simply, Kelly, we understand what you're saying, and definitely let's hope that this one, something, of course, cool is happening. So that's, uh, All right. that's the one that ends that's what's been That's what's been trending, everyone. And uh, being a Monday, you know, it's probably a trend that might go through the week. You never know. Uh, but we have to start uh, a conversation with our guest very soon. Uh, we've really been anticipating him getting set for us uh, to talk to us today. Now, this is a really interesting individual we're talking about. He's a Nollywood actor. He's also a singer, uh, performing artist, stage entertainer, and entrepreneur. Um, Charles Etubiebi, uh is about to let us in on his journey so far. Good morning, Charles. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. It's great to finally meet you. Heard so many great things, I have to say. Thanks for joining us. So you need to let us in on this journey. Now, the first thing that comes to mind now is the fact that you had the opportunity to start in a movie that had the amazing Danny Glover in it. You were in a scene with Danny Glover. Like, how many people can say that? Tell us how that felt. Um... That was one of the high points of my career so far, being in the room with a legend, mm. and a, a legend, an absolute wonderful human being, a father. Mm. I, think, I think they kind of know that you're yeah, starched yeah, yeah. the moment you walk into the room. So they do everything to diffuse the situation immediately. We should have you know, got to talk to me. We got to talk about different experiences, and then we rehearsed, and then we went it was i mean we rehearsed before and then we just ran it again and then went into the scene it was wonderful All right. it was absolutely wonderful doing that you know? i i have to say I, I, that's one thing i would love to do at least to be able to glean and learn from someone like that so tell us what you learned from him and his craft um one thing i learned from him was to be cool at all times like just always um always be a always be a solution provider mm. more than a problem instead of instead of just calling out the problem just be a solution provider like when we got in we had this we had an issue with uh, pronunciation of the names and then in less than two minutes he had come to a solution of what it was to say instead of the wow. name which is a problem to pronounce we had things with the directors and we had settled with the name which was something that let him do like that so i wow. I, I i've decided that what we do now is to be the kind of actor you want to be for the years, you should learn to bring value to the table. Mm. Always bring value. That's what people pay for. Beautiful. What value are you bringing to the table? Everybody make money and blow, but the only people who make money work in a mint. The rest of mm. us have to earn money. Mm. We have to earn it by providing some, some sort of service, which is what I gleaned from him immediately on the, on, on, on the spot. Now, when it comes to value, I, I can say that you've had quite a journey and you've definitely provided a lot of value uh, yourself. I, I had the opportunity to see the trailer of um, The Delivery Boy, and that's on Netflix. You want to tell us a bit about uh, how that movie was produced? Um, so the, direct, um, the, the director producer called me. Um, Kunle Noda, she called me and said um, there was a script and somebody had recommended me, so I needed to send a video. 
So I did an audition video and I sent to him and he called and said we had a meeting from, I think at his office from 12 to two o'clock. Mm. And so I went to, to his office and the meeting lasted from, also lasted from 12 to two, but I left his office by 7 p.m. Because we spent the whole time talking about the character, building the character, what mm. happens to the character before, after. And I read the script and I liked it because it's, it was one of those, it was one of those, it was going to be one of those films that really unmasked a lot of things that are going wrong in our society. There was no glam or, you know, pretty or dull it up. You know, it, 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 it was none of that. It was going to be one of those films that made a statement about what he felt about our society and what I believe to, because for you to want to do a film, you should also believe what the vision of the director is and what the film is trying to say. Mm. So for me, once I read it and once we had talked about that, it was clear cut that I was going to do it. Beautiful, beautiful. I, there, there are so many so other great nice. pieces you've done, but I took note that you were in, uh, was it 54 Silhouettes at uh, the United Solo Theater? Like, I, I'm like, how come I have not? So I would love to see a solo theater performance. And I haven't had the opportunity to, to do that. But the pressure behind that is quite a lot. How will you be able to, uh, how are you able to handle all that pressure being on stage all alone? Um, I think I think one of the things for most solo actors, those who have go, who have gone to solo performance, is it's more of proving something to yourself and to anybody else. Um, I was in, in, in 2018, I was working on this TV series called um, Forbidden World on African Magic. It was, it was great work. Don't get me wrong. It was fantastic work for me. It was steady work. It was 11 months of working on TV series, steady work, which is a dream come true for every actor. But the thing about me is I like to push myself. So being on that set, doing the great work that we were doing, it got to a point where it got monotonous. And I was like, just, you know, going through the motion every day, wake up, go, wake up, go. I'm very restless. And I've always had this idea that I was going to do a one-man play. In 2016, I was in Armenia, and I saw this wonderful actor do this one-man play. And then in 2008, I think in Joss, when I was there in Joss, I saw this other actor do a one-man play. And I just felt like in 2018, it felt like the time to do this. So I reached out to a friend of mine who was a writer, Africa Uko, who wrote the play 54 Silhouettes, which right. was originally a five play. And I told him, I said, there's this festival in Brazil I need to go to do, and I want to... I want to I, I want to perform a one-man play. So he said, yes, you know what, I'll do it. So he wrote it into a one-man play. And I started rehearsing from August. I stopped paying for my TV subscription. Wow. I stopped watching TV. I wow. Wow. He stopped stopping. Oh, wow. OK, I think, do we have a network issue there? Oh, goodness me. I really wanted to hear the end of that. Oh, but um, he, amazing actor, amazing personality. And uh, yeah, you should check out uh, the Delivery Boy on Netflix, if you get the chance. I'm going to be heading to the kitchen now. I wish I could have talked a bit more about the movies, but uh, hey, we have to wrap it up and head to the kitchen. Guys, if you had continued talking, Mike would have started eating. Like, Mike was like, <laughs> round up, like, I don't understand. <laughs> what do you mean, you want to continue talking? <laughs> yeah, I was getting ready yes. for, I was getting ready We have, yes, yeah, that's yeah. why I asked. You're already <laughs> For training today. Yeah, training. we see that. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the kitchen, Titi, and um, welcome to the kitchen, guys. Uh, yeah. Chef Belinda of BJ Foods has been in charge today, as Goodness you can me. see. <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is what they Madness. call a spread. Oh, yeah. making so much Calm down, calm down. Leave me. So, tell us about about this okay. before okay. Mike faints. In fact, you it's must faint. Um, it's a buka style oh, presentation, buka okay. yes. So we have our Nigerian rice and our Yamase sauce yeah. and with the orishi rishi inside the sauce. Okay. Mm. For this plating here, we had it tele tele mm. as in before, before yes. kind of setting. Rich. This is it. With See? your bowl well, and yeah. the clay pot. Well, yeah. Yeah. This one, we have the modern day buka where we have before, <laughs> before. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, it just goes to your rice and your meat and stew. What is the modern day book where you have your options, right. variety, ah. have my mind? So just give Mike. Mike is almost crying. Let's do this. I hope you've taken I'm some sure nice you pictures. I'm sure you want this modern hope you've day. taken some nice pictures. So this is the coleslaw, yeah? Yes. So this is this the rice. This is the modern day. I think you would prefer this one. Why would you really give yeah. Mike that? Let him <laughs> have that one. Yeah. Yeah. You already <laughs> wanted that one. Oh, have so that one. We had taste the food. Uh. I want it for please. Don't you? You are crazy clay pots. Use your hand. I have one for you here. Ah! <laughs> I want I want to to my so we're still in the in the <laughs> in the mood, Nigerian celebration mood. So you have your green, white, green in there. 
with your Green rice. Yeah. There's no time. So like, yeah, it's it's just test enough, something. Pala. Pala is life. Pala. <laughs> Oh yeah, look it's at the camera, the way you, you always do it. So you have to do that look, do that look, do that look. Criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Mike! <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my God, there should be an award for that thing you do. I, I really want I'm to end the show so yeah. you can join Mike. <laughs> But Thank man, you so much fantastic. for joining us. Yeah. Monday is just the beginning of the week. We have so much more coming your way for the next four days. 6 a.m., people. Right on early. Tomorrow. I need to finish before my zino comes. <laughs> have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.